Here's a breakdown of how I made this classic CRT inspired graphic for free in DaVinci Resolve. First things first, I have a timeline with the resolution of 1080 by 1350. This is that native Instagram resolution that looks really good across social media. Inside the Fusion page, this is the entire node tree. Let's start off simple. We are gonna look at how I created this background sort of pixel grid. It's cool. It's the overall effect that sets the tone. I started off with a simple fast noise node. This just gives us a little bit of texture and I masked that with a mask that is almost the entire size of the frame but just feathers out towards the edges that way we have our central fast noise graphic and it feathers out towards these edges here and that goes into one transform node that gives us this crazy grid this happens because i'm bringing the size all the way down and i have the edges set to wrap if i demo here i have our main first fast noise i'm going to set those edges to wrap and as i pull down this size you'll see that it replicates that and I just do that until we get all the way down to having this little field of pixels. And because I used a fast noise instead of a solid background node, we just have a little bit more texture in there. Then I am just using a merge to set that over a transparent background, just sort of as a canvas. And from there, we can move on. Taking this grid of pixels, I then funnel that into a dent node, which takes this nice uniform grid and sort of bulges out towards the center, sort of like a classic CRT monitor. So we have uh, smaller pixels out towards the edges and then inside those sort of bulge out looks really cool. It's subtle, but sells it a lot. Settings here, I did bump this over to Dent 2. You can mess with these settings to get all sorts of different looks. I liked Dent 2. Now for text, we have this same node field we created without the dent and I am pulling that into the mask input for this text. So if I preview just the text alone, you see if I disconnect that mask, hey, we have this text, but if I pull in that merge node, then you only see the text where it intersects with that uh, pixel field. One reason this looks so good is that over in shading elements down in softness, I have pulled up this softness so it sort of fades into the surrounding pixels. If I pull that all the way down, it looks really sharp and doesn't blend with the overall style, but hey, uh, crank up the softness and it looks really great. Coming out of that, we have the text, and I pipe that into my custom RGB split effect. I have a video all about this effect, but hey, uh, you have text, and then you just sort of RGB split it. And it already looks pretty cool. Coming out of that, I have a soft glow node to just uh, give it a little mass towards the center, but this really helps the edges and that uh, RGB split to come through. And then out of that, this is really interesting, I have another soft glow node. If I preview that, Nothing really changes, but check this out. The second soft glow is being masked by another fast noise node. If I preview that in my first viewer, you can kind of see what's going on. This fast noise has the seethe rate cranked up. So it is sort of coming on and off and then on or just the sides or on and just the top and then off. And you can see when that comes over the screen, that masks that soft glow. So we don't have just the static soft glow. We have another soft glow that just sort of comes in and out as this fast noise covers this area. And then we add that to our main background field. So yeah, we see you have those uh, pixels down there and then the text on top of it. And that is funneling into this transform node, which isn't doing much. All this first transform node is doing is scaling it up just a little bit because next, we have this second transform node. If I preview that, you see, hey, by itself, it just shifted a little bit to the right, but that is because of the mask on this transform node. If I select that rectangle mask and zoom out, you see uh, this is just a giant rectangle. And as we preview, the rectangle sweeps on and then off the bottom, and you can already sort of see what it's doing. This is a rectangle that is masking this transform effect, which just shifts this position a little to the right. So as this comes on, it shifts everything over to the right, and then it sweeps off and shifts everything back. And I have simple animations just for that move once, but then over in the spline viewer, if I preview that, we see I have those two keyframes here, but I had selected both those keyframes and toggled on loop. So you can see this box animates between those two keyframes, and then once it hits the end, it pops right up back to the top, so it will just loop indefinitely as long as we keep this graphic going. Just sort of kick in all our graphic over to the right and over to the left. And then that is the reason we have this first transform scaled it up just enough so that we don't see any uh, black edges when we jump over to the right, jump over to the left. Then we are finally comping that over a black background here. So now you have those fine pixels and our text. Next, we're going to be looking at this red and then blue texture 
that sort of slide over our image one after another. And they also add this really cool sort of harsher texture. Let's look at that. First, we are starting with another uh, blank node just as a canvas. And on that, we are first bringing this red solid. You can see I created a red background layer. And then I have a rectangle mask that does that same looping motion. So I just have that over the entirety of the horizontal width. And in the spline viewer, you can see I have that animated. It animates off and then I actually hold that a certain amount of pixels. And then that is what I loop over and over again. So it goes from top to bottom, hold for a little bit and then goes top back to bottom. And we have that for red and we have that for blue. And to alternate those, I just took the keyframes for the blue and made sure that when the red was going from top to bottom, the blue was resting. And then the blue was going from top to bottom. I can preview this both at the same time. So it goes red, then blue, then red, then blue, then red, then blue in a nice little loop. If you have preview this merge with both of them, we'll see we have red and then blue and then red and then blue. And that is coming over our scene here with a merge and that apply mode is set to linear dodge and I pulled the gain down. You can mess with these apply modes all day long, but this one I like the look of. You see it is pretty subtle, especially when I pull down the gain, you could really crank that up. But I wanted this just as a nice subtle effect. So here we have red sweep over, blue sweep over, red sweep over blue sweep over. Now you can see that compared to our final product doesn't have nearly that harshness. And that is because of our final little effect here. We are starting with another fast noise. And this fast noise I cranked up, uh, especially the scale and the contrast a little uh, with a little bit of seed rate. So we end up with just sort of this harsh grain. I am piping that through a little bit of an RG split. So just the edges get a little tinted either way. And then that is the foreground on a new merge element. But that merge element is being masked, this little blue input, by this red and the green overlay. So now we are only seeing this texture, and do note this apply mode is also set to screen with the gain down, but it is only adding this texture to our scene when we have the blue or the red, and then it follows that path. So we don't have this harsh noise over our normal pixel grid, it is only when the color sweeps that that is introduced and it really pulls that extra little bit of attention to it, but then, we have our media out, sends it back to the edit page where we can let that cache preview. We have those sweeping colors. We have our text jittering back and forth, that pixel feel the entire time, little subtle RGB split, so it'll glow coming in and out. Looks great. And because of the flexibility of nodes, I can come back into this first text node at any time, change this to something fun like like and subscribe and it will work perfectly, or even swap this out for a different graphic completely, or any custom animation, pipe it in here, it'll go through that entire process, it'll look great.